What's up painting friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stuf and today we're going to complete this painting tutorial. This is going to be part two of two to recreate my painting inspired by the covered bridges at La Trobe Country Club in southwestern Pennsylvania. I just got a nice frame for this painting. There you can see it framed up and I've been communicating with the Gulf Heritage Society editor of their quarterly magazine called The Gulf and we're talking about having this painting featured on the cover of the autumn edition of this magazine this year so I'm very excited about that. If you are interested in golf collectibles or anything about golf history, you should consider joining the Golf Heritage Society. I'm a member myself. Uh, it's a great way for me to communicate with other golf artists. Uh, but if you guys are interested, I will leave a link to the Golf Heritage Society in the description under this video. In part one for this video, a couple weeks ago, we blocked in the base layer of paint. We're using my soft bodied acrylic paints by Liquitex. You are welcome to use any brand of paint that works well for you. This is 11 inch by 14 inch canvas panel. If you guys want to touch back up on part one, I will leave a link for that in the description under this video too. But starting with part two, after we blocked in that base layer of paint, we started with our low lights in general. We started with like the shadows in the trees for that base layer of paint. So what I'm doing now is starting to add some highlights. And because this is an early morning scene, the sun isn't directly above those trees. The sun is to the left of those trees that I'm working on right now. So it's casting light on the left side of the trees and everything on the right side of the tree is still in shadow in general. Everything is still pretty much in shadow on that right side. There's no direct sunlight hitting those tree branches. So we don't have a huge contrast between highlight and shadow because we just have a little highlight where the natural light in the sky is kind of creating a bit of a highlight and there's a shadow under it, but it's nothing like what we would see if it was midday and the sun was right over top of those trees casting light down. So that being said, we are using a subtle highlight here. I'm just blending in some colors that are a little bit lighter. Last week I talked about value. That's something that's really important in this painting. It helps to bring this painting to life, helps it to look more realistic, and it's really helpful especially because it sets the depth in this painting. So with these shadows here, we don't want to make too much contrast and we're keeping the colors cool in general as well. We're not keeping the same color for all of our greens. So those pine trees that are like directly behind the covered bridge in the background there have more cool blue and green in them, maybe a little bit of a cooler red mixed in as well. And then the pine trees to the left background of the covered bridge are going to have more yellow ochres, more browns, more warmer reds blended in just to give us a range of color and value in these trees so it doesn't just look like one solid line of highlights and shadows. These are like separating each other out by changing up the colors a little bit in our greens. Now moving back to the background where I'm looking now, I'm just using a half inch angled brush here uh, you could also use a filbert brush for this and I'm taking some of my paint and I'm starting to dabble in some highlights. All of my highlights are on the left side of trees here where the sun is reaching them. I'm blending in some yellow, some phthalo green, some sap green, white, a little bit of ochre mixed in as well and our greens are tending to get more warm as they're moving closer to the foreground, especially when they are illuminated with sunlight. So next I'm taking that brush and just going back and forth on the side of the green, starting to add a couple highlights where the sunlight is kind of peeking through the forest and lighting up the fairway. I'm adjusting the shape of that 
bunker in the background there and I'm kind of playing around with the uh, tones and values just trying to make it read accurately I want everything on that left side of the fairway right between the tree line and the fairway to be a different color green than the green in the fairway and kind of change up the texture a little bit we've got a little more of a shadow under that tree line there and we've got rougher texture in the grass so I want to have a clear difference between those two grasses there even the highlight color is a little different between the rough and the fairway and the angle at which you create these lines of highlights on the fairway is going to help show the topography of the land so it helps you to see that there's like a rolling hill here and it's starting to go uphill as you get farther into the distance uh, to that putting green area. If you change the angle of your highlights peeking through, it's going to make the topography look a little bit different. Now I'm playing with the values again, lightening up the fairway in the distance, trying to make there be a little bit less contrast. I'm fuzzing out some of those details and trying to make things in the background feel a little bit softer because our focal point is this covered bridge so the things in the background can have a softer feel. We don't want to instantly look at that pine tree far in the distance right before the field we, in the really far distance there we want to look at that covered bridge first. So by keeping the background a little bit more muted and a little bit less dramatic with contrast and detail then we help to bring the focus in on this foreground. So we do have some more dramatic contrast here where I'm working because the light is hitting the left side of these pine trees. So I just put in some deeper shadows there, kept those nice bright highlights, starting to darken up more of the shadows on the right side of these pine trees. And I'm making these shadows darker because the trees in the background are farther away. They're going to have less contrast. Trees in the foreground are going to have a little bit more contrast. And I'm really just kind of pushing the brush around, creating these little uh, squiggly lines and holding the brush at an angle so that I can create these branch-like brush strokes. adding a little shadow there to the left side of the cart path where the grass is up there just a little bit and any of your highlights that go across the fairway and onto the right side of the painting beyond the cart path like the right side of the cart path make sure you continue those highlights across the cart path too now I'm adding a little highlight here so the cart path is what this covered bridge covers the cart path. It's like a little shelter slash pretty covered bridge to look at and the carts can follow their path to the green by taking this route under the covered bridge. So the cart path goes with the covered bridge there so I was just adding that little covered bridge and now I'm working on the details in the roof of the covered bridge. If you guys got your covered bridge uh, proportions accurate in the first part of this tutorial then you don't have much to worry about here uh, that's definitely the hardest part with the bridge the second hardest part for me was getting that roof done because there's a uh, there are shingles on there and shingles are tricky for me for some reason I basically achieved the shingled look by continuing to layer and layer up highlights and shadows until I felt comfortable with uh, the feel kind of doing um, not perpendicular but crisscrossing lines to get that shingle pattern. Here I'm going over with the second coat of paint, getting the wood grains vertically getting those little crisscross patterns on the inside portion of the covered bridge, adding in a little highlight and a shadow for the angled support bars there. And then going back again to the roof, adding one more layer of highlights, 
to get that shingled texture. And now I'm coming back to the sky to make some adjustments. After the first video, after part one and before part two off camera, I put in those little purple clouds just with an uh, angled brush, just going back and forth with the brush strokes to build in a base little bit of clouds just to see how I like the sky with some clouds. And I did like that. Uh, but now I'm thinking that the sky is a little too cool. So I wanted to warm up the sky to be more of a golden color and carry those golds and pinks into the clouds as well. So now I'm brightening up and warming up the colors in the sky, making it a little bit more golden, adding more ochre and yellow, and maybe a little bit of pink and magenta in there too, just to keep it nice and warm. And then kind of dry brushing it so it fades out into that sky at the top, top of the canvas. And then I just go over that base purple layer with some highlights to give us a little bit of depth uh, and these are still pretty simple clouds, but they read accurately. And because we have a reflection at the bottom of the painting, I have to do that same thing at the bottom of the canvas. Uh, I just kept everything a little bit cooler and a little less detailed. Uh, if you are doing a reflection, make sure you are just doing a perfect mirror of what, like a flipped mirror of what you have at the top of your canvas. So if you're clouds are angled with the high point on the left and the low point on the right and that's like your angle for the sky that it's going to be the opposite in your reflection so the high point will be on the right and your low point will be on the left and it'll basically be the same angle just flip-flopped so make sure you're painting your reflections accurately Now we're coming back to the covered bridge and I'm starting to add a little highlight here to make the bridge look a bit less flat. There's a little bit of light reaching the lip of that uh, vertical wall there. Uh, so I just added that little highlight there, a little shadow under it, and then I further adjusted that structure just to make the lines a little bit more straight. Then I started to add some more highlights to the grass. So the sunlight is reaching the grass right here. So we have a good contrast between warm and cool, light and dark. We've got more phthalo green, phthalo blue and umber in the shadows. And then in the highlights, we've got more of our warm and cool yellows. Um, a little bit of ochre might be in there as well. And some of our uh, lime green. I'm taking a small flat tip brush here to add these little streaks of highlights, these little blades of grass, just going up and down with the brush stroke to create that little uh, grass blade look. The covered bridge here goes over a small creek, so that is what that shadow section is under the bridge. There's a little creek with some water. You can't see the water, but it's implied that there's some type of a ditch or some type of feature that goes down under the bridge because we have that shadow behind the highlight there to the left of the bridge. We have some deeper shadows for the grass in the foreground here just above the rocks and the pond. Got some bright highlights mixed in there as well. The sun's just starting to reach the tippy tops of some blades of grass just using up and down brush strokes for that. And then we move down to the rocks. This is one of the easiest parts of this painting. I know it could look really complicated, but don't let yourself get overwhelmed. All you need to do is do a bunch of little circles and random shapes for your rocks, just to get the outline of each rock. Then you do the opposite when you do the reflection. So it doesn't have to be perfect because no one's gonna look that closely at your rocks, but if there's like one defining rock, try to make a good mirror image of that in your reflection. Your reflection doesn't have to be the exact same size as the real rocks there. I made the reflection part of the rocks be a little bit smaller due to the angle of the image. It makes sense to me. And then I just started adding the highlights for the reflection in the water where we have some trees reflecting. Uh, these trees are not going to be quite as bright or have quite as much contrast as they do in real life, 
but you still want to in general keep your tree limbs at about the same angle and shape so that your reflection reads accurately as well. Next we work on the light rays which are pretty easy to do actually. All you need to do to create these rays of light is to dip your, well first of all make sure that your base layer is completely dry. You can't have any wet paint on the canvas in the area you're working here with your light rays or it's going to blend and you don't want that. So make sure everything's dry where you're going to put your light rays down and then you're going to take some yellow with some white, maybe a hint of ochre and you're going to blend those together. It's going to be a nice bright golden color and then you're going to dip the brush into the water a little bit, maybe dab a tiny bit of that brush onto a paper towel so you're not like dripping water but you still have a thinner amount of paint and you're going to take an angled brush or a flat brush and you're just going to start at the top where your light ray is first breaking through the trees and you're going to do a straight line at an angle with the way the direction that you want that light ray to come and it's a swift little brush stroke uh, if you go too slowly it's it might drag in a way that's not like a nice straight line. So you kind of have to do a swift brush stroke there to get that nice straight line. And you have a thinner section at the top and then at the bottom it's wider. So you, like your light ray gets wider as it gets farther away from the source. And you just keep taking that brush and going back and forth over that section where you put that first brush stroke down and it kind of carries that watered down paint across and creates a little light ray. Next we have the mist rising up from the little pond in the foreground and this is a very similar process to the light rays. You water down your paint a little bit, use that same color of um, white, yellow, and ochre blended together and you start with that wet down paint, just put some little brush strokes to make it look kind of misty. Then you take the extra paint and water off of your brush using a cloth and then you kind of dry brush the rest of it and do like little squigglies with your brush, push it in different directions and it will give you that uh, look of mist rising up from your little pond or lake. And we build up the opacity of our light rays and mist. So you let this layer dry and then you can take a little bit more thin down paint and layer over top of it and brighten up your mist in some spots. Next we make the rocks come to life and look more three-dimensional by adding some highlights in there. I'm mixing some ultramarine blue with white and a little bit of burnt umber, uh, maybe a couple other subtle colors in there for these highlights. I'm getting some of them like all in random places here with that color and then I'm blending some colors with a little more black and brown in them for other rocks so they aren't all the exact same color or value. And then for the reflection of the rocks, you just want to keep your color a little cooler and your value a little darker than the rocks above water. Here I'm just going around again, adding another little round of highlights and touching up the rocks, then working on the reflection of the covered bridge. And for the covered bridge, you want to be able to have a straight line perfectly up and down uh, that vertical line that creates the wall on the left side of the covered bridge should go straight down into that reflection. You don't want to have your reflection slightly to the right or left of where that wall is above water. 
want your reflection to be perfectly down from where it was. And then the line that is like the horizontal line, but is like slightly at an angle due to the angle we're looking at the covered bridge, that is pretty much parallel, maybe slightly off parallel in the reflection. And then we just wanna keep our colors a little cooler, put a little bit more ombre and ultramarine blue mixed in and keep your highlights a little bit more muted as well. Next, I come back and boost those little highlights, boost the opacity of the mist. I wanted it to be a little bit more obvious coming off of the water there. Just dry brushing a bit there too. Adding a little mist over on the right side of the pond. And then I start to add some little highlights from water on the pond. And I'm just thinning the paint down slightly using a small flat tip brush. You could also use a liner brush. And I'm just taking some white with a hint of umber or like a hint of yellow in there as well. And kind of basically just trying to repeat the sky color and just keeping those little highlights back and forth on the water. Finally, I go back to my tree on the right side of the painting and boost the contrast on that tree. That tree is fully in the sun, so we have some bright highlights and some deeper shadows on that tree. And I'm just making some more minor adjustments, making sure I have some tree limbs on the trees in the background. And I feel like everything has come together enough to create a cohesive finished painting. I merged a few different ideas to create this painting. This, this wasn't me looking at one single reference photo. I had one reference photo for the main setup, like layout, and then I changed the sky, changed the light rays, changed some of the colors, changed the pond a little bit. So everything's a little different. Uh, this isn't from one main image, but here is the finished painting. Hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. I sped through things a little bit more here and I didn't go into too much detail about the colors I was using, um, but hopefully the first part of this video got you to a point where you could still follow along and you still found this helpful. If you guys have recommendations for future painting tutorials, then leave a comment below this video letting me know what you would like to see me paint. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and happy painting. Bye bye!